everyone. I'm Dr. Panaflek, or Jathaniel for all those who know me. Uh, we're going to get started this evening again. Uh, last session was incredibly informative, and we're going to get on and go with it once more. So uh, tonight, uh, I have the pleasure of inviting my distinguished guests, which is uh, Dr. Gogu, Dr. Nandiala, and Dr. Bijani. So Dr. Gogu, for those of you who don't know him, he is the family medicine faculty here at DHR, where I'm currently doing my residency, uh, his specialty in pain management and sports medicine. Um, he has a lot of experience interviewing, and this is exactly why he will bring a breadth of knowledge that will be particularly useful to us. Um, next, I would like to introduce Dr. Nandiella. For those of you who don't know him, I were not there last time. He's a critical care faculty as well. Gave incredible insights um, in our previous session, and I'm sure we're going to learn a lot with him as well. Finally, last but not least, I want to introduce my mentor, Dr. Bijani. Um, doesn't need much of an introduction, but I must say that a lot of uh, particularly philosophical and baseline reasoning as to why we do what we do and why this is a good answer or not is really going to come from his point of view. So the way we set it up is we pre-recorded we pre-recorded a um, interview session. So the idea and the way this is going to go is we're going to be playing segments of this recording, and we will be able to start, stop, and dissect each answer. And you'll also be able to see a couple of questions that are frequently Hello. Well, All righty. Yeah. And be able to deal with it as well in the proper format. Now, um, I will just give a chance to the attendings to give a brief introduction themselves, and then we'll be able to get started. Uh, Dr. Gogo, do you have anything that you would like to share getting started? Uh, yeah, no, uh, my name is Dr. Gogu. Um, I'm triple boarded in family sports and pain. Um, here to um, just hopefully, you know, offer some tips and advice, you know, through this ERAS um, application cycle. Um, I started interviewing last year for the DHR family medicine program, um, and it was just surprising, um, you know, how accomplished a lot of people were, but surprisingly just, you know, didn't ha have the ability to convey um, the right message to really um have a fair shot at, you know, uh, matching, um, you know, having a step one score, you know, having a good personal statement, having a good, you know, um, uh, letters of recommendation, you know, those are all like important things, but, you know, ultimately, you know, for one slot, typically there's about 10 people that are interviewing for it. And so it's very important to stand out um, during your interview process uh, at multiple programs because you want to be high up on, on, on their list um, as much as possible. And so this is an important process. Um, I urge people to practice, you know, um, I urge you to know more about yourself by introspectively um, looking at your strengths and your weaknesses and, you know, just really knowing how to articulate what's on your application. I think those are things that are kind of very vital. Awesome. That's, um, that's very, very true, uh, particularly not being able to articulate very capable people. Um, Dr. Nandiala, would you like to uh, say some words before we get started as well? Yeah, hey, uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Dr. Nandiyal. I'm one of the critical care physicians. Uh, um, so um, today is, um, is an opportunity for you all to um, um, have any questions that you have about residency interview process. Uh, most of the things for the residency application are done, like your ERAS application, LOR, CV, personal statement, everything is done. The only thing that's in your control to secure a spot um, um, right now is an uh, interview uh, whenever that happens. So um, this is your opportunity to ask any questions that you have and we'll do our best to answer your questions. Most definitely. Uh, it may seem that it's a one-sided show uh, between me and the attending physicians, but really feel free to throw in your questions both in the chat and uh, you can also unmute yourself if you have a question. Uh, my apologies. I seem to have overlooked Dr. Rai. Dr. Rai is a, a psychiatry faculty who's joining us as well. Um, I I think we're going to learn a lot for, because then we have such a multidisciplinary panel. So uh, different. Uh, we I'm sure that the different applicants are applying to multidisciplinary fields. So I'm sure that uh, we'll get some program specific insight from him as well. So. Um, uh, and I want to know if Dr. Rai wants to say something to get started. Hi, everyone. Yeah, I'm Dr. Rai. I am an adult psychiatrist. Um, 
Yeah, I just, I'm on here. Uh, Dr. Vijani kind of asked me, I work a lot with medical students. I, I do a lot of medical students do rotations with me. So um, I help them a little bit with interview. I'm not in the interviewing process right now. I did it a couple of years ago when I was with the University of Pittsburgh. But yeah, I'm just here to kind of um, if to shed some light on the psychology a little bit behind the interviewer and the interviewee. Um, some of the variations of emotions and what flows because, um, you know, many times you'll have, I have had medical students, amazing scores. Uh, some medical students who join me to do rotations here because they were exceptional in their scores in India and they still did not match specifically in psychiatry. Um, because I think the application is way beyond, once you get an interview, everybody's at the same, same platform. It really matters a lot to the faculty. Um, and sometimes, you know, in nervousness and we can talk all about those emotions. It's, I, I, if you want some help, I can talk about like, for example, nervousness, right? So then how do you handle it? If you're excited, how do you handle it? So I think it's an emotion game. So I'll be happy to kind of chime in and add on if, 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 if that would be helpful. We're, we're sure it will be helpful, sir. Uh, we're looking forward to your insight. Um, right before I introduce the last uh, um, attending on the on the panel, I want to introduce my co-resident, uh, Dr. Trivedi. Um, Dr. Trivedi and I are both in the internal medicine program here at DHR, and, and she was instrumental in helping us set up this um, the pre-recorded interview. And I'm sure that she's going to bring also some great insights and perspectives as well. Uh, Dr. Trivedi, would you like to say some words before we get started as well? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Rishika Trivedi, second year internal medicine resident at DHR Health, and I'll be applying for gastroenterology fellowship next year. Um, I'm really grateful to be here. Um, interviews are one of the most game, like they are the game changers of your whole application. And it's really helpful to have a uh, perspective from the other side as to how the answers are perceived and how they are dissected and uh, things that we really need to uh, keep in mind. So i um, really excited to be here and looking forward to this. Uh, Dr. Trivedi needs extra points because she's on the night float. So at any moment they can uh, they can rapture her for to deal to attend something on the on the general awards. But we're very thankful that you could be here. I'll briefly introduce myself and I'll conclude with Dr. Bajani. So uh, I'm a, also a second year internal medicine resident. I'm super happy to be here as well. I'm applying to cardiology next year. Um, Last session, I mentioned that all these lessons are I'm going to apply myself because uh, I already did one, but this it's the same ball game all over again, and practice makes perfect. And I would like to then move on to Dr. Bijani, who is my mentor, and uh, actually both of our mentors, and uh, who is setting all, all of this up. And we want to see if we can get some more screen before we get started, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, depending upon what's your time zone, uh, thank you for joining us. And I think we all learn from each other. You know, um, I'm not going to say how old I am, but I do learn from my residents a lot too, because, you know, the energy they bring to the rounds, the uh, the thought process they come up with, the questions, uh, the teacher is as good as the student, because if they're not going to ask me the right questions, I'm not going to give them a right answer. Right. So it's not only a role of a mentor, which I play. I think it's a give and take relationship. And that's why it's it, it becomes like a family for the next three years, which is going to go for next 30 years. So my thought process is always that interview is a psychological warfare. You you are trying to learn uh, the program and you are trying to learn yourself. And Sun a long time ago said the same thing. And I quote it every single time because I love that quote that. If you, if you know yourself, you know your enemy, you do not have to worry about the result of the war. But if you know yourself, but you don't know your enemy, then the bigger problem is that every every win, you will have a defeat. So 50-50% chance of your victory. But if you don't know yourself and you don't know your enemy, you are scum. So this is exactly what, what you have to do in your life. Whenever you fall into a trap where you have an opponent, doesn't matter USMLE, doesn't matter residency. Residency is, is even tougher even fellowship and even a life life of as an attending, know your opponent very well. And that's what we're going to do here. Why this question is asked, don't go for templates. I'm telling you again and again, that templates not going to give you answers because everyone's era CV is different. Everyone, everyone's personal statement is different. You come up with a personality and when your answers are templated, it creates a mismatch. And whenever there is a mismatch, it doesn't matter in the lung, it doesn't matter in the heart, it doesn't matter in the personality, it will always hurt you. So the goal is that today your take-home point is 
understand the psychology of a question and go back into your subconscious mind find out the answer and be the best when you are in interview so that you look honest you look a person with integrity all right and thank you all and enjoy the the whole session i'm sure we're going to do great this session last session was fantastic and uh, particularly getting insights from everyone we got a lot to dive into so without further ado let's get going uh I'm going to go ahead and start playing the sample interviews. Of what do you think, Doc? Should we get started that way? All righty. Let's get going. We're excited to learn more about your background and see how your experiences align with our program. To get everything started, could you please tell me about yourself? I've always been deeply committed to the idea of using medicine as a tool to transform lives. From an early stage, I saw physicians profound impact on their patients, not just in terms of treatment, but in providing hope and guidance. This sparked my journey into medicine. I've worked tirelessly to cultivate both the clinical skills and the compassion necessary to make a meaningful difference. Um, I truly believe that uh, medicine is a calling and not just a profession. And I'm excited about the opportunity to grow further in this program. Um, I, uh, especially under the mentorship uh, of esteemed leaders like yourself, um, your work and the reputation of this program inspires me to become the best version of uh, myself as a physician. I see. Dr. Gogo, based on what you just heard, uh, I want to know your perspectives. I, know, I want to know uh, how you would score. Would you, what, what comes to your mind when you hear this, sir? Yeah, you know, um, I think one, it was a pretty long answer. Um, and I think you don't want to lose your audience uh, a lot of times um, when you say such uh, long answers. Um, also, you don't want your answer to seem very formulated and, and very practiced. And that, that, that answer seemed, you know, pretty much pretty formulated. And I think you always want to tie it to your personal background. You know, um, tie it to your hobbies, tie it to what you like, tie it to your passion, tie it to your personality. Um, those are always the best answers um, if you can do that. Um, obviously, it's very challenging uh, considering it's such a stressful, you know, environment. Um, but you know, I urge you know I, I urge people to to relax as much as possible um, and just be yourself. I think when you're yourself and you, you project confidence, um, I think ultimately you'll give you a good answer. But those are kind of quick highlights that I had. Um, on that uh, answer. And to be completely fair and honest, you know, I, I was listening to that and I, I, I kind of was pretty bored with the answer. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. What do you think, Dr. Nadiala? Um, so it sounded like a very um, rehearsed and memorized answer. Um, it almost like I'm asking Alexa the same question and Alexa is just, uh, just yeah. saying whatever was fed into the uh, software. Um, I think most of the interviews start with the same question tell me about yourself like they're not looking or looking forward to hear how awesome you are like they already have a sense of who you are from your cv eras personal statement um, i think they are mostly looking at your communication skills to begin with and whether you are a person who can have a good conversation meaning like whether whether you are having a genuine conversation or just memorize the answers and then just spitting it out. Uh, Dr. Bijani, what, what, what do you think about, about this answer here? So most students start by giving their like background on medical school, why they became a physician, some experiences from the past. And in the end, they will probably going to start talking about their hobbies, cooking, dancing, and sometimes sports. So this is, this is generally like a template, right? But, when you look at, tell me about yourself, you, sh you should divide it into three sections, right? Which showcase that you have a good personality and then uh, what is your vision in life? When we talk about the bins, the first bin is your introduction. When you talk about your background, your med school, the second bin is your experiences in life, which can be good or challenging. Remember, there are, we should not say bad experiences in life. If, if you learn something from any uh, you know experience, then it becomes a challenging one. Ne never use a bad experience. You always use, I had a challenging experience. Anyways, the third one is what you have learned from those experiences. So now let's quickly go back to the background. So when somebody, um, you know, a student is talking about which part of the world or city they are coming from, they are indirectly telling me about their socioeconomic condition. Now suppose the student is coming from a poor socioeconomic condition or a challenging condition, the country where we have a cold war or a proxy war going on. And then now they are, they are trying to become uh, somebody from nobody that shows me automatically it's a determination and perseverance. But if you don't have that situation, don't try to try to create one for yourself. That's the problem. 
and if your school uh, med school is out of your state or country then it also indirectly reflects adaptability that's how i assess don't copy these answer mindlessly because template can hurt you very badly and we are only dissecting the psychology okay again everyone has either excellent or challenging experiences in life and based on that you have your moral compass in which you absorb during the circumstances and experience to become a good person and on the other hand the sk skills you uh, acquire through coaching and teaching now with all these you you showcase a personality and show your vision now your vision can be realistic and idealistic my problem is the idealistic uh, vision particularly the exaggerated answers the answers that leans towards idealism without acknowledging that yes medical career is challenging stay away from all those idealistic answers and and lofty language and only admiration that tells us that the student is immature he doesn't even know how the life works if there is no concrete grounding in your experience stay away from it so if somebody ask me how much i'm going to give to this answer i'll be a little generous i will give 1 out of 10 I just want to touch base on a couple of things here. I think one thing you have to keep in mind is you have about 15 minutes with your interviewer. And you know, personally interviewing candidates, one of the big things I've seen in a state being made is when this question is asked, some people spend 5 to 7 minutes on it. Um and if you do that, you basically wasted, you know, the interviewer's time because now you only have a possibility of another three or four more minutes of questions and then you have the opportunity to ask the interviewer questions about the program questions that you have um you know uh, about the uh, about the attending uh, potentially and so it it then turns out to be um a bad interview because they never got a chance to learn about you and so it's very important to be succinct in your responses and so when you when that question is asked which it's always is asked about tell me about yourself. You know, I think you got to view it in the lens of if you were being if you were asking your best friend that question, what would you say? And so, I'll give you a sample of kind of a template that I would use. There's nothing right or wrong about it, but you know, I would kind of talk about, you know, myself and like where did I grow up? You know, I'd say, "Hey, I grew up in, you know, New Orleans and in that community, you know, we've been we've been struck by, you know, many natural disasters and through that lens you know I've had a passion for helping for other people's um and that naturally led me to pursue medicine um and then you could go start on you know during medical school at Virginia Tech you know you know I discovered my love of family medicine you know because there's a huge variety that it offers and the opportunity to develop long-term relationships with patients and then I would go into the lens of you know outside of medicine you know I enjoy golfing playing tennis being uh, aware of you know current events um trying food um um and learning about new cultures and those are things that kind of help me maintain balance and stay grounded and then lastly i think one of the most important lines to say is really i'm really excited to be here and i really look forward to discussing how i can potentially contribute to my to your program provided i'm given the opportunity and i think it's always very important to showcase your excitement and i'll be bored you know not come across as being very bored that you're here or being stressed that you're here you know is that really somebody if you were trying to you know um meet someone or you know meet a friend or go on a date you don't want to be with someone that's very boring for example um and so it's i think very important to not show too much excitement but really showcase that you're excited and you're interested in the program and make all of that that i just said in about 2 minutes if you can You don't want to spend a lot of time about that because there's so many other questions that really have to be hit, and then you have your own questions that you want to ask. And so that's kind of my template on it, and that's why I really said that the first answer was just too long winded, long winded, wasn't to the point. Um, and I think at the end of the day, it wasted the interviewer's time because they have so much more to go through. So that brings us to Dr. Rai, who's probably the expert in the psychological part of the warfare. So uh, I want to know your perspective, Dr. Uh, Dr. Rai. What 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 do you think uh, uh, about all this so far? Yeah, so I'm going to put it like in a very simple terms. It's it's just exactly what Dr. Gogu said. If you guys have not been on a date, I mean, maybe some of you are married or something. Tell your partners go go on a, like a fifteen twenty minutes date with them and let them kind of behave like they don't know you. You don't know them. and then kind of do a feedback like how did i do like, what would you date me like would you go on a second date with me it's kind of like a that kind of interaction but of course this is very professional in terms of psychology 
Um, I don't know if there are any psychiatry applicants here. I mean, this person would not even, the program director would be like, okay, let's move on to the other resident because you are dealing here with lives of people with mental health crisis. You need to have emotions. You need to have empathy. You need to understand when somebody asks you a question, how to respond. So what I was getting to is there are two terms. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of it, but it's called transference and counter-transference. Always keep in your subconscious mind whenever you're going for an interview. Of course, what the term transference is, let's say I asked you a question, right? And then you respond back. The exact reaction that Dr. Gogu was having that, oh, I feel like I felt bored. I couldn't, he's not going to be able to say that to you, but you'll see in his gestures. So basically when you have a templated answer, there is this warfare, what Dr. Vichani said, the psychological warfare, it's the warfare of transference and counter-transference. And the interview just goes downhill after that, which you can see in this one that the, the, I, I listen to everything. So my one thing on this is when you guys go into this, just be a little bit mindful of this. That's the psychology that's playing when you are interviewing with, with someone. Um, when you are starting an interview, um, I think this applies to all the, whatever field you're applying into, is really being engaged and leaving the question a little bit open-ended because you are there to learn. You are there to kind of know, know that from them if you are a good fit or not. So when you are asked about yourself, you tell, okay, this is what everything Dr. Gogu said. I'm not going to repeat that. Okay. You, you then come, I'm like, I'm very, like the whole thing about I'm very excited. Um, you have to open the question in a way that you lead the interviewer to you have to tempt them to ask you the second question. It has to be connected. It's such an amazing play that goes on uh, when you are having a conversation with someone. And that will ease that anxiety too. Take pauses. Take a deep breath. Huh, okay, this is a good question. You, you Have you seen those things when someone is being interviewed and then you'll say, oh, this is a really good question. Maybe they're taking a pause at that time. Maybe that's not a good question, but they're taking a pause. They're, they're working on their sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. Do that as much as you as you can. And I think the interview will then then flow well. And in the counter-transference, in the se- I'm not sure if that's the right one, though, but in the sense of like seeing, like losing confidence as you're seeing their facial expressions kind of uh, go, is that what you're referring to, though? Yeah, and then they will say something or they will just shut, they will, won't say anything. And then it's just like, then, then the interviewer will also be like, huh, okay, I think in this also, mm, mm-hmm, mm, that's very interesting. Like when you say these two or three words, that's counter-transference. Like, okay, I have nothing else. Because you, when there is no back and forth play of conversation, then this means that there is this something else that's building up between the interviewer and the interviewee. So, yeah. Dr. Jerry, look like you want to say something, sir. Um, you got something to add? I have a question for you guys, you know, my residents, you know, mm-hmm. all the medical students or, and the graduates, they sit with you guys in a, in a private chat room, right? Sometimes you guys, guys are asking, they are asking them questions. They are asking you guys some questions from your standpoint. If you have to recommend, what are the characteristics you guys look into? It's, it's, it's a different perspective when you like sit on the other side of the interviews and like um, are taking uh, the meet and greets. So definitely one thing that I would um, want in my um, in the resident that I would future resident that I would be working with for the next few years would be someone who's like um, definitely open to feedback and how uh, and definitely someone who is incorporating the feedback, not just with uh, improving themselves, but also have actually invested in the growth of um, um, someone else, because um, I feel like as a team team, it's, it's a really important quality to have. And I have learned the most from my co-residents and one of the uh, residents that I really um, appreciate working with was Jack Neal. He helped me so much in ICU. He was not just um, uh, worried about him learning the ICU um, uh, uh, imagings and everything, but even focused on me. He taught me uh, different procedures and all of those things because you definitely want to have someone who's like, hey, um, so you have that hyponatremia patient, right? Um, 
I read this article and it has a, a great algorithm. Why don't we go over and just discuss that and it might just like help us and uh, let's discuss what are your thoughts. So someone like someone like that, um, one of those qualities uh, is something that I would really appreciate to have uh, in the upcoming uh, Brazilian uh, applicants. So Dr. Trivedi's uh, answer was so beautiful in my from my perspective that um, I didn't want it to finish, but uh, to give my perspective, I'd, I'd say uh, similar. I, I would, I feel what we're looking for since an interview, and that has a very high element of subjectivity. I think some of it does depend on your personality. So if your personality might look for certain things that are different. Um, one thing that I think that transcends all personalities is I think almost everyone wants somebody that's pleasant, um, someone that has an integrity, which I remember my last my last rotation with Dr. Vijani, like right before we left, he's like, so what's the definition of integrity? And I, go, <laughs> you're just, I just busted my brain on a patient and he just threw that on me. And I remember I liked the way he went about it. He's like, no, integrity is what you do when no one is looking. And uh, it's very hard to figure that out from someone, but sometimes we can feel a bit of it. It's sometimes misleading, but it's something that we're looking for. We're looking for signs of integrity, uh, looking for signs of humility, um, easy coachability. So like uh, Michigan was saying, Feedback, like if they can accept feedback, yes or no. I think uh, things along the lines of punctuality, professionalism, those are like a given. Um, uh, those are a given and they should be there for all of us who are professionals in this field. But I think those are those that transcend all, all, um, all specialties, particularly because we've all been there, we're busy. And then if someone's very pushy or uh, someone's just trying to show off or very egotistical, like uh, Dr. Jared was mentioning, uh, you can really feel the ego really quickly and um, those tend to be turnoffs for almost anyone because it, it creates strife and it becomes problematic. It's a stressful environment already in the hospital. I don't need you to add stress to it. You want, when you're getting smashed with patients, you want someone that's pleasant, someone that's been alone with you, someone that's going to stick with you, someone who's not lazy. So that's really what you're looking for. So I think like one of the things like I want to add um, in addition to what Sujan, Praveen and uh, Abhishek said was like, I think most of us consider interview to be very stressful. Uh, but in fact, residency interviews are not stressful. We just make it out to be stressful. In fact, it's a very chill environment. They are not trying to grill you on like your final your practical exam where your professional, uh, your professor is gung ho on failing you. Um, so these are very low stress in, um, environment and they are just trying to get you uh, to tell them who you are as a person. Um, imagine like you you went to a big conference and you see some well-known name and then you have some questions you just go and ask them like in a polite manner and enthusiastic curious right um, you won't go to him oh i am happy to meet your highness they are so and so uh, um, so you just ask them like hey nice to meet you i have this question you just get a lecture i have this question and then um, you, you, ju you just show your genuine enthusiasm um, um so interviews are not anything different um abhishek mentioned one thing um if you keep going on tell me about yourself um, they're not looking to hear how perfect you are or how awesome you are they are just trying to initiate a conversation but um if you keep going on and on on and on to a point where they feel okay it's all about you they already lost the interest and then whatever questions they want to ask is just a um, that, that just wants to move on and then get over with you basically. So they will keep nodding, uh-huh, uh-huh, and then they probably won't even be hearing what you are telling them. Also, if you have a rehashed and then memorized answers that you are just jotting down, basically you are trying to get over that answer, so you are in a hurry. The attending probably have heard those rehashed answer probably a million times, so he knows this is a fake answer that you just memorized. And then he wants to get over that interview as well. So not only you are rushing him to finish his questions, thereby not utilizing that opportunity to impress him. Um, like Abhishek mentioned, if you are truly genuine, like you will have a normal conversation like with a friend, like you met him at a party, you want to know him a little better, common friend, and you will have a normal conversation, right? Uh, like you, you won't say like, I am very privileged to meet you at your esteemed program, but not every program is an esteemed program, not every attending who interviews you is an esteemed attending. And then we all know like, like, hey, like I'm not an esteemed attending that you are making it out to be. 
Um, so um, be genuine and um, it's not stressful at all unless you take stress on yourself. Yeah, I like that. Particularly, we heap up way more pressure on ourselves than we need to. And that kind of inhibits us before we can even get started. And we, yeah, that's a very important point. Let's get started with the next question. All right. B. E. Okay. But then why internal medicine? Um, I chose internal medicine because it's the ultimate blend of intellectual rigor and um, meaningful patient relationships. Um, it's a speciality that uh, challenges you to think critically and holistically. Uh, managing a patient's overall health rather than focusing on single aspect. Uh, but more than that, it's the chance to be the anchor in someone's healthcare journey, building lasting relationships that truly matter. I'm particularly uh, drawn to the field because of the incredible clinicians um, like yourself who inspire me to be uh, me with their depth of knowledge, their empathy and uh, their ability to see the whole person, not just a disease. Uh, I want to embody those same qualities as I grow into a physician who makes a lasting impact on my patients' lives. All right. So that was the second question. Why I am is going to be asked all the time. I, I mean, I really do feel that this is very much, <laughs> it's so staged. It's as if like very much, um, I just don't feel adept. And in the beginning, Dr. Uh, Vijani said about conscious and unconscious mind. Um, it's very important to connect with someone to intermittently when you are when you're passionate about something and uh, they ask you which field. So you really have to be passionate about this field. Right. So that's the moment that you want to tap into a little bit of your unconscious mind. And what's an unconscious mind is something that motivated you. Like people write about their grandmothers and something in their village or something that motivated them. Dr. Gogu was talking about the New Orleans thing or something. So really, this is your opportunity. This is your one-time opportunity to use that and then really connect. You don't know, maybe, or probably you should know, actually. If you really want to be smart about like preparing for something, look it up if the program director is from New Orleans or the program director went on something to India or traveled something and did a project. Um, and then kind of try to tell, like, I'm not saying to lie or anything, but to see if your your interest matches with this program director. So that will kind of shine some light that, oh, you you did you did look up his profile, and also you are from there, so you are genuinely interested in internal medicine because you've been looking, you've been doing thing in this. So all I have to say is really tap into your unconscious, and then you will see how the conscious conversation flows seamlessly and it's 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 going to be it's 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 a and you know it's it's very simple you you're nobody's grilling you there and then you will start enjoying the conversation this is not i, I did my med school from india from from delhi from the same place dr vijani did it's not it's <laughs> it's definitely not one of those med schools from india where you are under pressure and under scrutiny these guys want you to to know you really genuinely. So you have to come up. You can only come come up with that story if you are able to be free, to be yourself, and then tell a genuine story that interests you. Because if you don't have interest in yourself, nobody will ever have interest in you. Mm -hmm. so, so keep that in mind that you really have to be interesting. And you wrote that personal statement. You wrote that CV and resume. And they gave you an interview. So believe in yourself. You are interesting enough for them to give you a chance to come and interview with them. So now it's just, it's time. They want to hear from your from you. So just do it. <laughs> and that's a great perspective, particularly as you're trying to realize it's not as stressful. Like we make it stressful, but that really goes into that as well. Um, Dr. Gogu, what do you think about all this? Yeah, so um, obviously listening to that um, answer, you know, once again, I think it's uh, a little bit long winded. Um, and I think going back to Dr. Rai's point, you know, I think you really need to tie it into something that the other person is going to resonate with. And, you know, that does take some time reading about the program, reading about the faculty, which I think you should do. If you're interviewing at any place, you really should know that place inside and out, get all the information possible that you can get. Um, and then really try to give an answer that can really resonate, you know, um, with that program. 
And so if that was a question, you know, that was, let's say, hypothetically, you know, um, asked uh, to me, um, let's say it's internal medicine, you know, I think they started off the question, right? You know, I think saying that internal medicine, you know, it, it, it's a it's a specialty that kind of offers a, you know, a unique opportunity to work with a diverse patient population and manage, you know, many complex and multifaceted medical conditions and also build long term relationships with patients. I think they started off that element correctly. But I think this is a real good opportunity to say, you know, my I, I became really solidified with choosing a specialty like internal medicine because I had great observerships that really drew my interest um, into IM, you know, or I had really good clinical rotations that drew my interest into IM. I was really drawn by the intellectual challenges during that time of doing these observerships and diagnosing and managing complex cases. You know, I also had the opportunity to do case reports, publish this, you know, at national conferences. Um, You know, I, I think that's kind of, you want to kind of highlight some of the things that you've had an opportunity to do. And then I think you also want to highlight, you know, I'd be really excited to potentially, you know, go to a program such as yours um, because it really does offer a strong foundation for lifelong learning. And it does allow for like primary care and specialty opportunities with good experiences. I don't know whether I'm going to choose to be in a general IM setting or some specialty, um, but, you know, I have the ability to adapt at such a place, at such an institution. And so I'm not an internal medicine doctor, but, you know, that's uh, the only reason I started with that is because uh, Jack Mayo started with an IM question and why IM. But I think you really want to hit uh, hit um, those type of bullet points um, and really kind of tie um, some of those things together and formulate a good response. That makes perfect sense. I, I totally agree. And, and Dr. Nandiala, you want to add something to this? We're all going in this same direction of uh, really um, hitting the, the bullet points that that are why your specialty and not really going on this rehearsed um, um, recording in a way that you, you kind of rehearse and remember. Um, what do you think, uh, at least in, in, in this, from this point of view, if, if I'm relaxed and and I'm listening and I'm, and I'm asked this question, like why I am, in my case, uh, and I answer anything along the lines without hitting the bullet points. What do you think that I'm doing? Even if it doesn't sound rehearsed, it, it, does it seem like I'm too nervous? Does it seem like I don't have the confidence? Um, what do you think? Um, so um, again, like uh, this is another question that they frequently ask. Um, like first, uh, for two two reasons: whether it matches your personal statement. If your if the theme of your personal statement is completely different. Uh, because you didn't write the personal statement and your answer is completely different and you're, you're caught right there and there and then uh, they, 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 they know you are lying. The other thing is like uh, basically all they are looking for is uh, authenticity. They want to understand um, if you are motivated to this specialty or if this is a backup. Uh, and they're not looking for unique reasons to pick a specialty. Like not everybody can have a unique reason. It can be a simple reason like uh, just you are you, you have a very good clinical rotations in IM or whatever specialty you're choosing, or it could be a mentor who have influenced you to pick this specialty, or it could be any reason. Uh, but um, again, all they are looking for is an authenticity uh, that you are genuinely interested. And then um, obviously, you have it, it, if you have some experiences or some achievements to back this up that will always be helpful or even otherwise you can tell them like what you plan to achieve out of this uh, specialty residency mm-hmm. perfect and just complete with dr vijay uh what, what, is, what are your thoughts so the answer that was given can be applied to any branch a lot of patients complexity of cases continuity of care surgeon does the same work psychiatrist does the same job fm does the same thing we do the same thing so how did you deduce that I am is your calling? So go back to your, your school time, right? I hated history and geography at that time. So when you choose a subject, it's, a, it's, a, it's your educational choice. But when you are choosing a specialty after your med school, is actually your occupational choice. There's a huge difference between your occupational choice and, and your educational choice. You can say, oh, yeah, I want to I want to heal human body. Yeah, OK, that's why I took biology and I became a doctor. But now from there, I want to become a surgeon. That's your occupational choice. I will give question four out of 10, which is very, very generous from my side, because 
it did discuss the educational aspect of choosing that particular sub speciality but not the occupational side when you look at the occupational standpoint you need to know the working hours is your speciality more focused on inpatient or outpatient or both or you can switch right do you like to talk to patients a lot or you are more focused on okay hospital medicine fix out is there any fellowship you can become an expert in what is the pay grade right that's also important and is there any growth uh, you know opportunity for growth in that particular speciality everybody loves to showcase only the educational choices okay so you need to showcase that you have actually understood this branch from the occupational standpoint so i will i will give it 4 out of of 10 and on this next question i will just reach out to a random uh, applicant that's here and we'll see what their scoring is what they think about it and their insights as well that way we can open the table to everyone else as well all right so this is the next question um please share a strength with us a strength that you consider uh, my greatest strength is my unwavering dedication to excellence i approach every situation um with a mindset of giving 110% uh, whether it's patient care uh, research or teamwork i believe that success is found in the details um and the small everyday actions that build towards a larger goal this dedication uh, stems from my respect for the great mentors i've had like yourself um who show the true excellence in not just being knowledgeable but um about continuously striving for improvement i know that this strength will allow me to thrive in a program like this where high standards of care and education are paramount well that's definitely an asset right So would you have responded the exact same way as the interviewer responded um Dr. Gogo um to that answer? You know, I thought it was a pretty uh, decent answer. Um I don't think it was um entirely um you know a uh, terrible um I think they did a decent enough job, you know, um applying their strength to medicine um to um other aspects of their life um as well so i think that was um you know pretty decent answer so i wouldn't i wouldn't criticize it too much well we'll go with dr desta then uh want to know how we, how would you score this from um, the answer to this question um can you hear me well I hear you perfectly loud and clear okay thank you so first of all i would like to say thank you for the opportunity uh, that you uh gave us this kind of session and uh i think the answer is in, in terms of content it's good but uh if i have to score it maybe i'll give it 5 because um for one thing it was a little bit exaggerated uh, with 110% 100 something percent uh the other thing is um it it seems a little uh, staged as well mm-hmm. um and the other one is it didn't give much of example uh like when she she was answering there should have been an example related to the um to the strengths she was referring to all right yeah, she wasted like you, know, you have limited time and limited words and just go around buttering the patient the the the, the uh, attending who's interviewing you up um what do you think dr randiala so i think the content of the answer like i have no problems but the way the content was delivered again it seems very rehashed alexa style answers um most of the time when the interviewer asks your strength um they are not i mean they know your strengths more or less from your cv um there may be few other things that you can highlight which are not mentioned in your cv or the application but i think what they are trying to assess is your self awareness and then not only your strength how you are actually pursuing your capabilities are you overestimating yourself or are you underestimating are you self aware of your capabilities or like you think you are the best when your other eras application doesn't match what you are telling me everybody will say like i am a perfectionist i'm hard working like i i work 30 hours a day um uh, uh, again that's where um they are looking for self awareness like what you perceive um uh, uh what your i mean you have your strengths but how much you are perceiving that strength to be are you perceiving your strength as 200% related to other people um that's what i think they are trying to um analyze most people think i have to list all my strengths like a to z and that will impress the interviewer but uh, i think you you have to pick couple of your strengths and then um slowly blend into your personality 
uh, without being over exaggerating uh, and then they all they all look for humbleness in spite of your strengths mm-hmm. it looks like someone can get a pretty good um, psychological and personality perspective with this question uh dr ray you anything you wish to add to to this in this perspective? I mean, we all know it is staged, so um, I wouldn't say much, again, the same uh, analyst about the content of it, but you have to be very mindful there is a subtle difference between are you confident, are you arrogant, are you resilient, really, or you are saying, oh, I've been like, I'm coming from this country and da 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 but still I'm here, so you have to be, the words change, changes everything. So when you are confident, you have to balance it with humility. And because when you are, when you show humility, you are, I mean, I'm kind of going into these emotional categories, but you then build trust. I really do think when these questions come, why internal medicine? What are your strengths? Why the program is really looking if you will fit in in their structure, or are you like Dr. Trivedi said that she would like someone who would come? Let's read about hyponatremia because so can she trust you? Can the program really trust you? You just just go back and ask yourself, who do you trust more? in your life do you trust people who are arrogant would you ever ask them i would never go back to my i do not email or text any of my attending from india not to bash them but there are few who i still stay in touch with because they were very humble they were happy in my in my success but there are a lot of them you all know when you if you come from india pakistan i'm not sure about the other countries um so really show that humbleness i did not see much of that in this like so you really when you are conversing with someone um the superman does not have to say he is a superman so be very mindful it's by your act like dr trivedi explained something and you went ahead and said oh i just i wish i could just listen to her right she didn't have to say she's a superwoman so kind of keep that in mind that with your words and selection of your words in an interview you can make a huge difference, but for that, really, you have to kind of be humble. You have to; the, it has to come from within. Otherwise, it it just comes along as something else when you are nervous. So, because it's, it's it's a high stress state. So, start training yourself. What we are telling you here, all the panelists are set, telling here that it's not really a very high stress state. It's a conversation, and you just have to be authentic. Mm-hmm. Dr. Bijani, I wanna. I think you're the last here. Yes, sir. What what, what do you think? Now, what is actually strength? So I don't know how many of you guys have actually watched a movie, Kung Fu Panda, but they use the concept of Bruce Lee. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. That's your strength, the thing which you practice daily, which can be your empathy, can be your communication, can be your teamwork or critical thinking. But you should be ready to give a lot of examples. So in, again, in this answer, I don't see any specific examples, only flattering words that literally shows the disconnection from the reality in the clinical world. Clinical world is very different. All right. So uh, again, being a devil's advocate, I will give it three and a half out of 10. And the flattery dog, what is um, what your perspective on the flattery? So how's, how, how uh, it's a fine line, to tread, right? It, it's actually, it, it's, it's a wrong way, you know, uh, it shows desperation like you are swiping everybody right on the dating website that makes perfect it's so bad so be very mindful if you attack your own integrity in your answer you are done or you're gonna match in a poor program which does not respect integrity in their own system anyways sorry but that's the reality so again three out of three and a half out of ten all right let's move on to the next question well that's definitely an asset but uh why should i take you for this program I truly believe that uh, I would be an asset to this program because of my passion for learning and my commitment to contributing to the team. This program has a stellar reputation and being trained under such experienced and accomplished faculty like yourself would be a privilege. I'm ready to take on every challenge with the same energy and enthusiasm that has driven me through medical school. And I know that the opportunities I would have here would allow me to grow into the physician I aspire to be. 
Um, I'm confident that this uh, program uh, with its remarkable leadership would bring out the best in me and I would be honored to be a part of it. All right, uh, Dr. Shahid, I want to know what what, it, what what would you score this um, this answer, um, and why do you score? What would you score it like? Just give me your insights on it. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for including me in the conversation. Um, I was listening to the answer, and I think it it seemed uh, decent to me. Um, I couldn't like uh, think of it like very uh, boastful or something like that. Um, the candidate is highlighting um, her strengths and what basically I think what she could have improved is she could have added more stuff that she can bring to the program, um, including the program mission and vision, because each program is unique and you need a lot of research uh, about the program before you are able to, you know, present to them what you are bringing to the table. So I think highlighting those strengths that could be um that could be actually beneficial for the program would be a great idea. For example, if you are, are applying in a university program that is like very uh, research heavy, then you should have your CV uh, crafted according to that and you should have your work speak for yourself rather than just saying that you could do this and this. You should have a firm background with this. So this is one thing that you can tailor and then personalize the answer into like for every program that you have, are interviewing with. So. That's my point. Yeah, and I would score it like a five out of 10, maybe, but I'm not in a position to score um, my candidate. Of, um, of course you can you can score. At thank the you, of, thank you. Yeah, it's your, it's your point of view. And that way uh, it opens, it actually, like Dr. Rijani was mentioning, he's very, uh, he's being, he's giving a lot of benefit of the doubt to the, to the applicant. Some people are harder judges than others, but what's more important is what you can learn from it. If you feel this is a five out of 10, that's fine. Um, I want to know what uh, Dr. Gogu thinks. Yeah, a um, couple of things. I think one, uh, I, I think this uh, statement was pretty um, pretty robotic, and I do agree with the, uh, the applicant. I think you definitely want to tie it into their mission, want to tie, in, tie it into the community particularly. I think you got to always showcase um, whatever your program you end up you know, interviewing for you really need to understand its community um, and you need to understand the mission of the program. Um, I also think some of the things that's very important to highlight um, is usually the night before, usually attend a, uh, a resident mixer or a, you know, uh, a pre-interview dinner. And I think a lot of times through that pre-interview dinner um, or that resident um, uh, meet and greet the day before the interview, you really get to hear from the residents about the program and there obviously be things that you're drawn to and i think it's very important to highlight that you know especially the things that that you were drawn to you know obviously try to read about it the night of try to learn more um, but really try to maybe showcase some of those things into your answer you know it might be that they might say that there's a particular clinic that you know um, is underserved there's a lot of procedural training there um, that might be something that excites you and might be something to say uh, about why you consider their program. You just don't want your answer to be kind of robotic. You want to use all the clues and, and, and resources that are available to you to just formulate a response. Uh, Dr. Nandiamo, do you have any insights on, on this one from, from the perspective of what the answer is? Um, yeah, uh, again, I'm becoming a little repetitive, but uh, the entire answer like uh, um, seems very real. Yeah, like, um, let's assume like uh, she is, um, I know her as a person and then she is um, asking me if I can recommend her to a hospital where I have some contacts. If I ask her the same question, like, why should I take, uh, why are you interested in this program or why should they take you? She wouldn't say the same answer in the same tone. There's no pauses in that answer. There's no... Um, it, it almost feels like a continuous one paragraph with no full stops, no commas. Uh, it's, it's just a one answer, uh, a very long answer as well. I think when they ask, why should I take you for the program? Um, they're, not, uh, they're not looking for over achievements or overemphasizing your achievements will not secure the spot. Um, by the time they 
offered you the interview, all things even out already. Like some people have better scores, some people have a better CV, some people have a better personal statement, but they all even out. And then whoever they offered interview, they will be happy to take any of those candidates, um, assuming each of them perform equally well at the interview. So I think what they're looking for is like, how well can you fit into the program? And then like, what qualities that you have that they will enjoy having you for three years whether you're teachable whether you will um you whether you you are adaptable whether you are a good team player um so that's what they are looking for um, um and i think um, that's what the applicants uh, should focus on rather than just uh, um, one continuous paragraph of answer and do you think that um do and just doing your due diligence on researching the program, um, because sometimes that can you can be very like, oh, I know this about the program. You have this at the program, and uh, what 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 do you think is like the way to? Because either you would see someone go off about themselves and uh, describe, oh yeah, I'm I would do this, I would do that, I I I the whole way through, and the other one is oh because you have this at your program, that at your program, that at your program, and I think they know their own program. So uh, finding that balance and what, what do you think of, like, uh, about that? I think like if your rest of the application matches particular interest, let's say you are going to a program where they are very big on oncology research, let's say, and you are interested in oncology fellowships, um, it becomes much more believable. But let's say I want to work with this world famous oncologist, but I want to end up as a hospitalist, it doesn't sink. Um, and then they might counteract and then ask you a question. What if you don't match in this program? Are you willing to wait one more year? Because mm -hmm. if this is the program for you, and then you would think any other program is less than this program, like what if they ask you? Yeah, that's a tricky one. I didn't even see that coming. So that's, <laughs> they would have caught me for sure. So uh, Dr. Roy, what do, you, what, do you, what do you think? And then again, like one more thing I want to add, I think like most of the um, templates that these IMGs get, uh, the, the greatest harm from those templates are, they are only thinking of those questions and some of them probably in the same order as well. Like yeah. If the order is missed and then they get very panicked and then they end up not even telling what they have memorized. So some of some interviews, they, they, they only last at tell me about yourself because they have something that the interviewer said and then they have never heard about those stories and then they just want to hear more about it. Like they, they probably are tired about hearing, tell me your strengths and tell me your weakness. Why should I take you? Why this program? So maybe like uh, that's one way of catching the interviewer's attention. Like uh, um, if you have a unique story uh, um, uh, and then their entire interview focus on that one and then they leave the interview with a good feeling and then that's your bonus point section. Awesome. Awesome, yeah, that's so true. What, what were you gonna say, Dr. Ryan? Yeah, I mean, just to kind of sum up everything, um, th it, this is a very fascinating, It's this question has always fascinated me and everybody will ask this question. Like Dr. Nandiala said, if you get to that point, mm -hmm. many times people don't get to that point. Um, it's just exactly like, this is a very, it's a situation where the program is the, it's literally, they are asking, why would you be interested in me, right? So you have to bring a balance. You can't flatter themselves, them that, oh, I just want you because you are this, you are that. So I do think there was good like terms about being a team player um, and what program wants. But when you really want to answer this question, I see it from, again, coming from the point of psychology, it's more like, what are the goals of the program, which I hear most of the panelists saying, what are the goals of the program? You need to read about it. Um, you need to know it, that what the goals are, what this program stands for, what this program is looking for. But then now you find a balance, what you have to offer to, to, to this program, not boasting too much, but a little bit about I have done this or this practical answers and then finding a common balance there that, yeah, this is my little bit, my background. This is what interests me. And the program goals are, I know this program is doing this, 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 or certain attending is doing this. And that's why this is what I, I feel like. So you have to know the goals. You have to match it with your goal. So I, I feel this is a little bit of a tough question. I have always in the past when I interviewed the candidate, what Dr. Nadiala said, I always felt going back and forth because it's, I am asking you, am I interesting enough to you? So 
I am going to be in a position that I'm going to defend myself a little bit, or I'm going to be like, oh yeah, that's fascinating. So by this time in the interview, you really have to get the attention of the interviewer. And you can only do that relaxed. You can only do that when you're honest. And this is where I really feel the matching starts. Okay, am I going to match this? I mean, again, Dr. Gohu can tell more about it. I was in this process a few years ago because, oh yeah, no, okay. This is where you have the chance to go six, seven, eight. So don't fake, don't flatter. Don't talk, don't tell them about their own program. They run the program. They have listed it. They know what their program has to offer, but you have to show them. Again, I feel like if they're asking you why this program, but they also want you to, make, to, to show that you're going to be a good match um, and give examples, stories. Um, I think that's, that's the best way now to climb that ladder and get those extra points that they are like, okay, I'm going to put them in the matching category. So, uh, Dr. Vijay? I'm um, keen to hear your insights as well. I'll do the score first. Uh, this time, three out of 10. And uh, I totally agree with Dr. Rai. A couple of uh, minutes ago, maybe half an hour ago, Dr. Rai was talking about confidence and humility, a combination of that, right? So there's a very fine balance, or I should say proportion, which I I think it should be a part of your answer. Any deviation from your confidence, you will you will land up in overconfident zone or anything from humility, you will become an arrogant applicant. So it needs to be a very fine balance. And before discussing your strength, you should compare your the your values with the program's goal and vision. So remember, it doesn't matter how sharp the saber is. If the saber sheath is not a good fit and they are of different sizes, they are not compatible, they are useless to each other. If it doesn't matter how sharp you are, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you and the program are on two different pages, then uh, then they're not going to take you. If you showcase that I have 50 research, I have I have uh, 20 uh, multivariate analysis, I have done this and this and this, and you are you are interviewing in a in a community hospital where they want you to be a clinician and they want to see if you have taken care of a patient. You are not you are not hiding behind a desk and writing all this with the help of chat GPT, then definitely they're gonna say, okay, thank you. You will match in a bigger program because we want a clinician here. So if you are a mismatch, then that's a problem. Exactly. Uh, let's move on with the next question here. <clears throat> but why this program? Uh, I have researched many programs, but this only, uh, this one uh, truly stands out as the ideal place for me to grow as a physician. Uh, the combination of your world-class faculty, cutting-edge re research opportunities, and the dedication to serving a diverse patient population is exactly what I'm looking for. What draws me most, however, is the strong sense of mentorship and guidance that I've heard so much about. To be um, trained by the leaders like yourself who have such a profound impact not only in medicine, but in shaping the next generation of doctors is an opportunity I deeply value. I'm confident that this program will help me achieve my full potential and I hope to contribute to its continued success. All right there. We're going to go ahead and see Dr. Spice, Dr. Allison Spice. Uh, want to know what you uh, think, uh, what, what would you score it, and your thoughts? Uh, I probably would score it between a four and a five. Um, I definitely feel that it was one rehearsed to, it was a little bit on the shorter side, I think, um, as far as when it comes to, comes to it. Um, you want to obviously do, like you love you, I've been reiterating, is do the research on the actual program. So find something that is very unique to that program or highlight about that program, or even potentially uh, initiative that maybe the program director is working on, um, or even uh, the residents may be doing on. It could be for some programs, they might be going to have an elective abroad. It could be something that they're trying to implement a new fellowship for ultrasound um, or different types of things um, that they may be doing. They might be having an approach for social economics or with the within the community. But those are the things that you want to kind of hone in is something more specific and not necessarily just in a general consensus of what the program that you would say to any program, right, type idea. There's no fully generic answer that you can apply to <laughs> very program specific, yeah. isn't it? Exactly. Uh, Dr. Naniela, aside from it being rehearsed, <laughs> I'm sure. What do you what else do you think? And how would you score it, sir? No, I think that this one has a couple of good points. She did mention that she has heard that uh, um, they have a good mentorship program, uh, which is very program specific. 
and they, um, if they ask questions about that one, she should be able to elaborate as well. I think this is uh, basically they're trying to figure out, uh, figure out if you have researched their programs and then um, if, um, I mean, if you are a good enough applicant, they are also trying to figure out if you would actually rank them highly enough. Um, your answer to this question will be dependent completely on, it, on the program itself. If it's a university setting, your answers will be a lot different to if it's a community setting, your answers will be a lot different. Uh, obviously, you can go to a community setting and say world-class research, all that stuff. And so, I, I mean, I don't think there's a generalized answer for this one. Like, it's completely program specific and then what you're looking for in a program and what's your career goals are um, after the residency as well. Perfect. Uh, moving on to Dr. Gogu, do you have anything that you wish to want to add, sir? Yeah, no, I think uh, everyone kind of took some of my words on it. I think the main things that I'd like to touch on is obviously do research about the program, you know, use the, the dinner or the pre-interview dinner and really understand the program um, that night and, you know, combine the two of what you did, what you learned the night before and the research you've done to really formulate a response and always look into the community that the program is a part of, you know, is it part of a huge, you know, a Latin population? Is there a big African-American population around there that you're treating? Is there a big uninsured population? I think really try to understand uh, the community um, is very vital. And then obviously, um, you know, there's certain interests that obviously draw you to that program. Every program has strengths, every program has weaknesses. Um, and really, you know, um, try to align yourself with the strengths and, and um, formulate a response in, in that way. Most definitely. Um, Do Dr. Rai, do you have any anything to add to this as well? Um, yeah, no, nothing much. I think everybody kind of covered it. Um, be very mindful. You can't you can't be interviewing in rural Pennsylvania where the, the, there is not much diversity uh, because they can ask you back. Okay, so are you talking about diverse residents or you talk about diverse Um, So the terms that you use have a good understanding right. of, of what you are saying. So all I would say right. is that, that don't interview in a community program, but you know, Dr. Nadella was saying, and then talk about the cutting edge research. Um, I did like that the, the student <laughs> did a little bit of variation from all about excellence and oh amazing mentor to to talk about a little bit about diversity that i get to see in this the applicant that uh, she or he is interested in what community she is going to practice because you're not going to serve the attending you are going to serve the community so like the it's just so amazing how dr vijani he is such an amazing job he has done with picking the question because now you are getting into the weeds of are you going to be a good fit for the program? Are you going to like the community? So, so good job, guys, uh, all, all of you, the, the, you and, the, and Dr. Trivedi and uh, Dr. Vijani. So, so I, I like Flair, the, the, the diversity part and the community part. So I think that is really, really important to know the community that this program is in. And if you have a family member or a friend who lives in that community or a co-resident, then talk about that a little bit because at the end of the day, yes, you are getting trained in residency, but you're there for the patient. It, every program is patient centered. So always try to bring that in. I heard that a little bit in diversity conversation about community. So I thought I'll just kind of touch upon that. Yeah, adding the, also going to the pre-dinner just gives that extra little idea of not just knowing the program is and the objective things that are there, but also that you'd be comfortable there and then the environment of the program along with the, the community they're serving. Uh, that's that's awesome. Uh, Dr. Vijani, what do you think, sir? First of all, I'm not going to give a score now because then I'll be the meanest person in the group, which I'm not. So uh, the way I, I understand this question, why this program is... Uh, a kind of a vehicle in India, it's called scooter. It's like a two-wheeler, like a bike, right? So a proper functioning of a, of that vehicle or a, let's say bike in for US, because it depends upon the exact similarity of the tires. You know, you have a front, you have a back, both tires should be same, should be inflated with the same pressure, should be the same width and a height. If they are not, the two-wheeler not going to work. The bike not going to work. It's going to fall. So the interviewer wants to assess that there is an alignment between you and the program. Do you understand the program or not? Do you understand the values of the program, the goals of the program, the vision of the program? And, and 
you have your own values based on your cv your your personal statement and your words which you are uttering during the interview from your conscious and or your subconscious mind which is actually showcasing your virtue which is showcasing your skills your long term goals in life the, the students are trying to create their values and goals and forcefully aligning them with the goals and vision of the program like, do not do not focus on program's prestige only no you have to show why you are uh, why you are a good fit and you need to have a specific reason that why you are a well suited uh, personality for that program uh, avoiding to forcefully align that's a very good pearl for sure because that's something that we all do all right let's see if we can move on to the next question say teach me something i don't know one fascinating concept that i have deeply uh, in, uh, that i've been deeply interested in is the role of hope in patient outcomes research shows that patients who feel hopeful about their prognosis often experience better health outcomes regardless of their actual medical condition it's a reminder that the medicine isn't just about the physical body but the mind and spirit as well i strive to bring this philosophy into my practice always making sure that my patients feel supported and empowered um uh, i am sure you've seen this countless times in your own practice um where your ability to inspire hope in patients has undoubtedly led to uh, remarkable outcomes all righty then so let's go on and ask dr sue not sure if i'm pronouncing your pronouncing your name correctly hitetsu soe so i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing it correctly if i'm butchering it i'm sorry about that and if you're not there we'll go with dr maheshwari what do you think i don't see anyone there All right we'll go with uh, dr aurora Dr. Ashwreet Singh Arora, what is what is your opinion on this, and uh, how would you score? How would you score the the answer that that the applicant gave? First of all, very thankful to everyone for doing this. And uh, as for the answer, I feel the composition, the words are good, but the answer sounds very like recorded and rehearsed. And I feel like whenever you say an answer on any interview, it should feel very spontaneous. and uh, yeah but the content is definitely good mm-hmm. so what what would you what would you score it as so out of 10 from 0 to 10 i'd say it's a decent 6 out of 10 decent 6 that's solid uh dr andial what do you think do you give it a 6 and uh do you agree that the topic of choosing home all that do you think that that was good uh, so this is a this this question i'm hearing for the first time as well so it caught me by surprise as well uh, but the way i see it like i think like the interviewer is just trying to see if this person has a life outside medicine um everything was about medicine and once in a while this is your opportunity if you are interviewing this is your opportunity to ease things to lighten the atmosphere a little bit it can be a simple thing and i i don't think it's a good idea to teach an interviewer or something in medicine you're just playing with their ego basically so it, it could be a simple joke one of those daddy's joke a simple sudoku puzzle or whatever like it, it just to lighten the atmosphere uh, so the interviewer also feels good actually like if he doesn't know something non medical he wouldn't feel as bad as you teaching him something medical mm-hmm. Well, that's important to watch out for for sure. Um, don't want to bite the hand that's feeding you, uh, Doctor Doctor Gogu. What do you think, sir? I think Doctor Gogu has to step out. Oh. He just texted me. Okay, I think oh. we'll just go with Doctor Rai then. Rai, what do you think, sir? I mean, I think uh, to me it's a very fascinating question. I really do like this question that what can you teach? um because this is your moment to show all these qualities that you write in your cv about being a leader and all that um i think she approached it pretty well i like the answer about hope and mind body spirit and maybe my personal bias i like that at least the student is opening up and adding these terms um again what dr vijani has said before you have to give a, an answer i would love to hear something where in medical school maybe this student got a chance and was able to express and was able to teach something and did not even know that they were doing that or uh, a story with a mentor like the mentor was actually a patient taught you something so those moments where you the patient is not really wanting to teach you something but patient said something and then you learn from it 
you know, um, I, I really do remember those moments in my own medical school when my attendings were really tough on me about not rem- remembering the labs during the rounds. And literally this one patient said to me that next time when the attending comes, they, they will write the labs on their hands so I can read it off because the attending wouldn't allow me. So you can teach humility. You can teach some of these gratitude and humbleness. And they are the, the patients. So just an example came to my mind. I don't think I was asked this question. So Dr. Nandiala is right. Probably I don't know if this is even asked. Uh, but this is one of those moments that you can really, really connect with the interviewer. But these are the questions you can't frame it, guys. This is, You can't be chat GPT. This is a real life question. And if you don't have an answer or you don't have any teaching moments, what Dr. Nandiala said, just kind of be gentle about it and then just don't answer it. But these are the questions you have to, I feel personally, you have to give a teaching moment kind of answer a real life answer to, to really connect with the interviewer. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Penaf, like, sorry, uh, this is Dr. So. When you asked me, I was collecting my thoughts. So uh-huh. yeah, for that, uh, yeah. So yeah, I think that the candidate answering, um, I would avoid any, uh, you know, the interviewer is profession, medical profession. I would avoid teaching um, such kind of medical sort of things. But personally, I would choose, uh, personally, I like uh, doing pickled vegetables. So maybe I would teach something how to make one kind of pickled. I don't know. Uh, that kind of answer would be great if I would answer. Yeah, something something different, something showing you the right. aspect yeah. of your life, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's yeah, that, that that's yeah. exactly the most likely what they're asking, particularly if you listen to the tone of the interviewer when he's asking it, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Dr. Jana, what do you think? Yeah, sure, yeah. And someone said that teach them about your culture. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's also going to help. It, it also shows that uh, you're willing to share okay, right. your, exactly trade culture, cultural mm-hmm. aspects. Exactly. Uh, Dr. Jana, what do you think, sir? Let's say talk, talking about some abstract concept: culture, love empathy everyone has different meaning religion everyone has different meaning so when you even you showcase and i'm gonna teach you something that already telling them that hey i'm gonna impose this meaning of this particular word on you so for me hope may be a totally different thing for a person who is dying hope may be totally different for him that's why everybody has a different meaning of dnr dni right you know so we have to be very careful what abstract concept we are using I generally prefer to have a concrete topic, like, you know, that Dr. Nandiala was talking about. So then rather than you can focus on something related to your hobby, like, for example, one of my observer, she was very good in uh, interior designing. So she knew all about limestone uh, walls, something where, where you have more objectivity rather than subjectivity. The interviewer wants to gauge your teaching ability, straightforward, your communication skill by putting you on the spot to, to check if you can think on your feet or not. One. Second, if you have intellectual curiosity outside medicine, if there is no depth in your answer, there is no specificity in your answer, and it is only flattering, it's an abstract concept, then then you will get one out of 10 from at least me. Even gives you a chance to establish a bond and create more trust rather than go the opposite direction if you deal with it poorly. All righty, let's go to the next question. Okay, you captured that well. Tell me about your typical work day. My typical work day is centered around making a lasting difference in my patients' lives. I approach each day with a sense of purpose, knowing that every interaction I have, whether it's with patients, colleagues, or mentors, is an opportunity to learn, grow, and make an impact. I spend the time connecting with patients, not just treating their condition, but truly understanding with their concerns, um, their concerns and what matters to them. My goal is to provide the kind of care that transforms their outlook on health. I constantly think about how great physicians like ourselves approach patient care. And I strive to emulate uh, that level of empathy and precision into my own practice. I want to know what you think about the, the response and what would you score it? And yeah, then give me your reasons, please. Uh, I don't know how will I score it, but yeah, it, it uh, the answer is fully contained in all the fancy words. And... Uh, it shows that patient is really dedicated to, to uh, right now, uh, she is dedicated towards the medicine. So I think it is really decent answer. But uh, what if uh, some uh, 
uh, some uh, applicant is not uh, aligned with their medicine work currently so how can they present their um, uh, suppose they are doing some kind of voluntary work right so how can they present themselves so yeah uh, I, i'm expecting that kind of uh, uh, answers as well yeah. all right so uh dr Rai, what do you think sir how would you score it and uh do you think the, the applicant went about it the right way yeah i mean I, i'll leave it for dr vijani to just to, to score this um i just this is just I, it's the same pattern i feel like it's just a lot lot of boastful um answer i again just commenting on the psychology of it is just so boring and uh it's it's very very the one word is repetitive um and uh by this time i would like to like have a back and forth conversation but this kind of answer i'm not going to ask you any question back probably just move on to the another question so yeah not much to to add from the psychology point of view because it's very flat it's very like boastful you know that makes sense don't want to seem over arrogant either. Dr. Vijani, uh, what, what are your thoughts about it? How you manage your time? Are you an organized person? What are your ethics when you work? How you handle your workflow? How's your stress in your life as uh, during work? Do you have self-discipline? Do you follow the law of accountability or you push everything on your on your friends? Like, hey, it's not my mistake. This is his fault. Right? Are you a dependable person when the when the team is in a problem? Are you the one who will be like, okay, I'm I'm the one who can who can handle this for now? Are you a team player? Yeah. can you balance your active learning and patient care as a as a resident that's a that's a very important aspect it is very important that your answer should not look polished it should not look idealistic it should not have lot of abstract ideas that you're going to make a huge difference it should not look like it's too good to be true so acknowledge that you know you can have challenges you can have constraint when you work you, you should have a reality of working in a healthcare so mm, most of it, that was very insightful for sure get into a close here got two more questions Let's go on to the next one. Into my own practice. Okay. One weakness? Um, um, uh, my weakness is that I sometimes set uh, such high expectations for myself and others because I believe in constantly striving for perfection. Uh, I hold myself to an incredibly high standard and I have um, had to learn that not everything will go according to plan, especially in medicine. However, this idealism... also this drives me to work harder and push myself constant to constantly improve just like the great mentors i've had including yourself i am working on finding a balance between setting high standards and being more realistic in my expectations it sounds like you've given this a lot of thought all right and dr nandiella kind of left you out on the last question there what um what what, what is your opinion on this one Yeah, I think like again when they ask you about your weakness they are just looking for genuineness not all weakness have to have a plan to overcome not all weakness needs to be overcome if somebody asks me like what's your weakness i will say i've been planning to start exercising for the last two decades but i still didn't start and that's okay i have no shame in admitting i don't think the interviewer would mind that me not exercising would be a misfit for the residency so um you you just have to be genuine if you have a weakness that you are able to overcome uh, that's great uh, but don't brag about it uh, be humble about your weakness and how you are able to overcome it and then maybe if you can explain the difficulties um you overcame um to um to uh, achieve a success now uh, that could be helpful as well but uh, uh, be genuine about it awesome uh dr dr rayo i would love to know your thoughts as well sir yeah i mean the same thing when someone asks about your weakness it's not like they are going to target you uh they just want to know a little bit about you more because sharing your weakness is a mindset of being able to be vulnerable vulnerability is a strength if somebody could be just imagine people people laugh at stuff oh this model walked the ramp and she was wearing short dresses or whatever you can never match the strength of a model who walks the ramp who wears short dresses or whatever kind of dresses okay so they are just wanting to see if you can be vulnerable 
So that's what Dr. Nandiala just said, that I don't have any shame in saying that, you know, I've been wanting to exercise, but I have not gone to a gym. So he was vulnerable, but he was honest. And then he showed his friend that, yes, I can share that part of me. So I think that's all this the, the interviewer is trying to know. But also at the same time, that applies also to, can you be vulnerable and honest with your, um, with your patients? Because, you know, when they want to know a part of you because um, you're not in a movie that a movie star shows a part of themselves in a movie and then the part other side of themselves to their personal life. Like here, literally, they want you to be professional, but also want to see that. Can you be really vulnerable at the same time, honest to a patient who's dying and you want to tell them about the death, you know? So, yeah, I think honesty is the best thing that you could do when you are. Um, I actually have started feeling a little empathy for this student. <laughs> like if this student was interviewing for psychiatry and if we would have, the, the student would have matched, the student would be seeing a therapist for sure. <laughs> With the amount of stress this student has. So, I mean, nobody's targeting you. So don't feel like when they ask for your weaknesses or um, it's actually a really good opportunity to bond because you can be vulnerable and show your strength in vulnerability. I like that. Showing your strength and vulnerability and finding the right way to do that. Uh, Dr. Vijani, any, any other words that you have on this? On this? So, so now one thing is for sure, Dr. Nandiala is going to the gym when he's, he's working with me in the ICU. The problem is people use this tactic to show their strength as weakness. It's very insincere. It's very immature. And it, it shows that you have no self-reflection and you are not genuine. Right? It suggests that your weakness is your pursuit of excellence. No realism. Right? Programs do not seek for the perfect candidate. That's exactly what I am keep saying. They look for candidates who have the potential to become better, right? Why would you Why would you have a resident who is uh, who is so perfect that he will not even listen to a program director? Bura jo dekhan main chala, bura na milia koi, jo man koja apna mutsa bura na koi. That means that I couldn't find any evil when I went seeking evil, but when I looked within, there was no one more evil evil than me. Right. So this is very important. It shows that we need to have our self self awareness. Don't don't answer as a perfectionist. Every personal statement, every application looks like God has reincarnated in the form of a medical student. We all look at that. Everybody becomes so empathic. Everybody is so compassionate. Everybody is a team leader. Everybody is a is somebody who's reaching for the highest goal. Always remember that your weaknesses can create situations and how how you address those situations, how you handle them and how you improve yourself based on that is humility. That is exactly what they want. And finally, here comes a question that I've seen in, in the chat a few times. Here we go. Question is if he had a question. Let's see. I would love to hear uh, more about your experience leading uh, this program. Would you think, uh, uh, what do you think has been the key to its incredible success? What advice would you give to someone like me who is eager to contribute to this uh, legacy of excellence? I'm inspired by the incredible work that has been done here. And I hope to learn from your leadership as I navigate my own career. So when finally given the opportunity to ask the interviewer a question, that's how she chose to proceed. So I would just like to go first with Dr. Ray. Uh, you think that was a, a, a good a good question to, to ask the interviewer when given the chance? Or if you think that she could have addressed it, got it on a different route? I think, I mean, this is the moment where you can go really in depth and um, and ask some, I mean, I, I mean, again, this is a very staged uh, scenario, but I really feel when they ask, do you have any question for me? Or it's a sign that actually you have done very well and they're almost at the closure and they're really interested in you. You can only reach there once you have done well. Um, you, this is something I, I would say that you have to be prepared for. You can't prepare it at the last minute that I do think when you go for it, when you are genuinely interested in this program, you have to have a set of question. It could be anywhere. This is the moment where you incorporate, oh, I'm, I, I'm married. I'm trying to raise a family here. What would you to tell me about, you know, schools here or um, anything related to community, related to I'm very interested in hiking or I have been a national swimmer or so I think this is a moment where you can really connect with this attending and the attending will be like, you know what? I would like this resident to be in my community and would like them to be my neighbor or maybe because um, I know you guys, I don't know how, how many of you have done rotations here, but joining a residency, there is so much emphasis right now on 
Um, I never, when I was in my residency, in, as a psychiatrist, we were, we were allowed to and were at certain times supposed to see a psychoanalyst, but we get way more and more referral from family medicine, from internal medicine, because the emphasis on stress and wellness is just at a very different level right now, in, in specifically in the United States. Um, so I would take this opportunity to really show that what were your, what are your questions that, okay, now I'm at a point that I might be given a chance of matching in this program. So what all would I want to ask this person? You love Indian food. Oh, I just want to know. I mean, maybe the, the, the one of the interviewers said, yeah, I like Indian food, Indian food. And there is this restaurant. Ask, ask one of the resident about, okay, is there other Indian groceries, Indian communities, or so be genuine. You just does not have to be really, it could be very much like what really you want to know, because now you both agree that you might actually uh, rank this program high up and you want this program also to rank you. Perfect. Uh, Dr. Nandiyal, I, I would like your, your perspective as well, sir. So usually this is the last question before concluding the interview. So um, it, it, it is an opportunity for the applicant to make the interviewer feel good. It's like a movie climax, basically. You need to have a happy ending. So you, um, the one thing the applicants should not do is ask uncomfortable questions to the interviewer and let them leave the interview with a bad feeling. Like don't ask them like, hey, we heard that one of the residents got fired last year. Or we heard that there's a crime in the area. Make them feel comfortable answering your questions. And in fact, if, if it was me, I would ask them questions that they can brag about. So that gives a sense of happiness. And then they leave with a feeling, okay, uh, I also did well. And then this resident uh, uh, is a good candidate. So if at all there's anything, um, I would ask them a question that he is very comfortable or in fact can brag about it. I, I like that perspective for sure. And then don't leave a bad taste in their mouth. And finally, uh, Dr. Vijani, what, you, what are your insights? Hmm. So this, uh, so technically when the program is asking this question, it's, it's more or less like a courtesy and uh, you are given a chance or let's say an option to ask a very practical question. For me, let's leave a psychology from, from this question for a time being. Let's just focus on the practical aspect of this. So please do not ask questions to, and, and the other thing is do not ask the questions which showcase your strength. Like if you have 50 researchers in your, in your uh, CV and suddenly you start asking, do you have a research coordinator or a research wing in your residency so that you are reminding the program, hey, I'm a good researcher. No, it doesn't go very well. And uh, do not ask, everybody tells this thing, that do not ask the question which is already available on website and you can go, you can check. And if you ask that question, that will show that you have not done your homework. Most of the time, whenever there is an interview for first one hour and 30 minutes, the program will drag about itself. Every single thing which is not written in the, on the website. So please write it down in, in front of them. So even if you need to compare the programs, you can. On the other hand, if you don't have any question, right? That means two things. Either all of your questions have been answered and you should be able to convey this message clearly to the interviewer. That makes perfect sense. Uh, we, we've come to the end of our simulated interview. And I really hope everyone enjoyed and learned a ton from this. As we're drawing to a close, I'm going to give a chance for all of the attendings to um, give their final parting words. Um, and I would like to first get started with uh, Dr. Nandiella. So, um, so, so just a couple of things. So uh, contrary to what most people think, uh, the interviews are not stressful. In fact, it's a very low key and they're very, most of the time they're very friendly. They won't grill you. Even if you give them a very bad answer, um, they will still be very nice to you. So um, so don't take stress during the interview. And then at the, the most important thing is be genuine. Um, they have probably seen like thousands of applicants and they have interviewed thousands of people. So they can easily figure out who is faking, who is just rehashing the memorized answer. So be genuine. Programs hate nothing more than um, lying and fakeness. So um, they're not looking for a perfect candidate. Um, and then as an IMG, most of you will match into community programs and they all know like if you're so perfect, you wouldn't even rank them. So they're not looking for perfect candidates. They're looking for somebody who can learn, uh, who is humble, who gets the work done, who is hardworking. That's all they're looking for. And then as well as like they, they, they also, they're also looking for people who can mingle with each other. 
Uh, so be genuine, uh, don't take any stress, and then um, uh, every answer should be your own answer. So a lot of people are still asking, like, what is the best answer? There is no best answer. Your answer is the best answer. And that can be a worst answer for a different applicant. So, so just be genuine and then uh, 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 be authentic. Perfect. And uh, concluding with Dr. Vijani, what 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 would you what words would you leave us with after this uh, very dynamic session? So always remember my my philosophy of life is very straightforward. Everything around you is a psychological warfare. You have to stay humble when you interview. Um, this situation reminds me of a quote about Alexander the Great, which describes how he possessed immense physical and mental power, yet even in every victory, he showed respect and grace by bowing his head, even though he had a very strong uh, domination. So despite ruling over the vast land, sitting on a throne, he remained grounded and modest. So he left a message for a future kings that true greatness is in the power or wealth. It's the respect for humanity and humility towards others. So, ki sher ka jigar bazu mein fola taakat thi, sikandar ki fateh mein ek himmat nitar thi. Fateh ke nashay mein bhi sar jhuka tehzeeb se, uska dil bada tha, ye baad bhi azim thi. Dunia ko jita magar raha farma bardar, zami ke takht par betha par dil raha thak saar. Shaho ke dilo mein chhod gaya wahi paigam, ye asli shan wahi hai, jis mein insaniyat ka hai taram. So, in the end, if you need to contact any specific men mentor from us, 101 interview practice or any detailed personalized approach, you can always go to mdethos.com. There are a lot more questions uh, which we could not cover because, again, my residents, they are they are busy and uh, the, I'm very thankful to my, my panelists who are not only my friends and my colleagues, but also my mentors. So um, with all this, all the best from the team MD Ethos. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us at mdethos.com.